Today on Monkey Life, Alison visits Desmond and Tutu, two potential companions for lonely Saki monkey Chloe. Hey, Mr. D. Oh, little man, you look very sweet, too. But will her concerns about Tutu mean only one of the pair returns with her to the park? Tutu's future is in the balance right now, so we'll have to wait and see. And the chimps go football crazy. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Right, ready to go. Three monkeys in the box, not too bad. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 22 different species. The team do their best to rehabilitate all the rescued primates brought to the park and give them a new start with a more natural life. And that includes companionship of their own kind. But sometimes it isn't possible, and the team must come up with new ideas to provide the primates with company. Elderly Saki monkey Chloe has benefited from living with the park's oldest group of five squirrel monkeys, since her partner Jethro died a year ago. He was one of the park's most endearing characters, and since his loss, the team have been keen to find a new Saki partner for 27-year-old Chloe. After much searching, they finally come up trumps. So today is a really, really exciting day for us on the small monkey section. Alison is just on her way to Sheldon Wildlife Trust in, in Devon uh, to pick up two male Saki monkeys uh, to be friends with Chloe, our female Saki monkey. So it's really exciting. We're really happy for her that she's going to have companionship of her own, her own kind. Their father and son uh, called Desmond and Tutu. Um, Desmond's the dad, he's 10 years old, and Tutu is his son, he's four. Uh, so we're really lucky that we found them and um, we're really glad that it's happening and really looking forward to it. Chloe has coped well since Jethro passed away, but recently she appears to have been missing the company and interaction of her own species. The situation may have been compounded by the arrival of a new and rather boisterous squirrel monkey, Nueve. Nueve is quite young. She's very active, she's very playful, but she thinks a big ball of fluff that is Chloe is quite entertaining, so she'll nip up and she'll, she'll pull her tail a little bit or she'll give her a little pr a prod. And then when Chloe reacts, then Nueve thinks it's hilarious fun and carries on doing it. So Chloe tries to avoid Nueve as much as possible and uh, we sleep them separately so they don't, she doesn't have to deal with them. She gets a good night's sleep and someday she decides that she doesn't want to go anywhere near Nueve and that's fine and we allow that as well. So she's, uh, she's just seen as a bit of fun from Nueve, but Chloe doesn't quite see it like that at the minute. While Alison is on the road to Sheldon in the neighbouring county of Devon to collect the pair of sarkis, at the park, the team are prepping one of the enclosures, plus a couple of bedrooms in the marmoset complex. Desmond and Tutu will spend their first days here while the team assess them, checking their mobility and carrying out medical checks. Then, if all is well, the two boys will be introduced to Chloe. So we just want to give us give them a bit of time to get used to us and give us a bit of time to get used to them and just see how they're doing and, and monitor their, their well-being and their health. Following a two-hour journey, Alison arrives at the Sheldon Wildlife Trust. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Good, good to see you. It's really good to see you yeah. all. The park in Dorset has a strong association with Sheldon just last year, Monkey World was the quarantine centre for five Bengal slow lorises, rescued from the black market in Hong Kong. Two of them, Tina and Bob, moved on to live happily at the centre in Devon. The collaboration between Sheldon and Monkey World, specifically with the loris, will continue on into future. You know, it's, it's really a pleasure to be able to work with people who are also dedicated to the care and learning about a species that so little is known about, both in the wild and in captivity. So really nice bonus, you know, come back 
to Sheldon to pick up two sake monkeys, but nice to check in on Bob and Tina. <laughs> we got the squirrel monkeys in this one. After a quick tour from head keeper Carly, Alison is eager to get a look at the two sake monkeys, Desmond and Tutu. Hey, Mr. D. Ten-year-old Desmond is in the prime of his life. He's a healthy and fully grown adult sake monkey. Oh, little man, you look very sweet, too. However, his son Tutu is a different matter. He's only four years old, but has had some health and mobility issues since he was born. And Alison is concerned. I know, I'm not trying to tease you. I'm just trying to see what, what your deal is. So he can take the raisin, but only when it hit his nose. He wasn't just zeroing in on it and taking it. You don't know what you're looking for, really, do you? I'm wondering that it's more neurological in the sense that he's not processing the information. See, look, he leans his head down and he shoots down below the food and then he feels it with his nose and then gets it. So his sense of touch on his nose is working and that's how he's picking up his food. Um, but he doesn't seem to see it, zero in on it and then reach out with his hand like that. It concerns me that Desmond is going to be very loved up with Chloe, at least I hope and expect. And I worry that Tutu's going to be left in the dust a little bit. It's a concern. It may be that Tutu has a problem with his sight. Alison wants to see how mobile he is around the enclosure before making a final decision about whether to take both boys back to the park. I sort of tentatively said that I would take both Saki monkeys I, with a reservation that if we can't meet Tutu's needs or he doesn't thrive or look like he's doing okay at the park, we'd have to consider his future, which everybody here at Sheldon has already been doing themselves as well. So it's a little bit of an odd situation. We're definitely bringing Desmond home to be with Chloe and hopefully with our squirrel monkeys if they behave themselves. Um, and Tutu's future is in the balance right now, so we'll have to wait and see. Summer has well and truly arrived at the park, and with temperatures soaring, the primate care team are doing everything they can to keep the primates cool and hydrated. At the bachelor's enclosure, cheeky chimp Sammy decided to make the most of the warm summer night, staying outside longer than the others. A bedroom was left open for him to come and go, but he's up early and out again. Now the rest have woken up and are being let out to join him. As usual, the boisterous bachelors like to make their presence known to everyone in the vicinity. Paco is well known for his impressive displays. Meanwhile, Rocky gets on the wrong side of Buxom and is put in his place. All pretty standard in chimp society, and it settles down as quickly as it started. Freddy's already soaking up the early morning sun, looking relaxed and well following a recent operation. Football fever has recently gripped the nation, and the primate care team are giving the boys a chance to get involved with footballs, kindly donated by a local organization. Hakito hasn't quite got his head around the rules just yet. Batting back passes by hand. Much more of this and he might get sent off. Seamus, however, is a natural, showing off his dribbling skills with two footballs. But when it comes to shooting, he hits the post. Sammy likes to practice his throw-ins. 
and boy can he throw! Right into Paddy's enclosure next door, where young Bart eagerly scoops up the balls to play with. Some of the boys are wondering if the footballs have any treats inside. Butch is ripping one open with his teeth. As is Paquito, but with even more enthusiasm. High-ranking Buxom is having a whale of a time. At 36 years old, it's lovely to see this tough guy letting his hair down. And just having fun. The bachelors are all really enjoying themselves. And Buxom's even collected enough footballs to make his own ball pit. He's quite happy for this game to go into extra time. But after the final whistle, it's time for breakfast. And true to form, Buxom has scored a huge stash of Swede. But Paquito just can't resist one last shot at goal. Alison is in Devon on the south coast to pick up two male white-faced sake monkeys from the Sheldon Wildlife Trust. Ten-year-old Desmond has been lined up as a possible companion for the park's female sake, Chloe. Sake pairs often mate for life, and everyone is hoping they'll get on well. Desmond has had a previous relationship, and as a single dad, is accompanied by his son, four-year-old Tutu. But while Desmond is a healthy adult male, Alison is concerned Tutu has neurological problems, which affect his mobility. After watching him in the outdoor enclosure for a while, she makes up her mind and decides to take both back to the park. He's a really odd case, and I don't know that we're ever going to be able to figure it out. So probably it's worth doing one basic health check with John Lewis and then just trying to make him happy and comfortable, and we'll see how we can achieve that. Listen. Yeah. Chloe is desperate for a male companion. She adored Jethro, but unfortunately for her, that love wasn't reciprocated. I'm hoping that she sees Desmond and just falls in love and that Desmond is pleased to have a female companion and that they provide each other with what they need, which is those whistles and communication that none of the other species will provide and also the right kind of grooming. I just hope Tutu doesn't get left behind. But before the pair can be taken back to Monkey World, they need to be persuaded into their travel boxes. Never an easy task. We're going to try and make them the most interesting place going with nice tasty treats inside and then just go in and sit alongside the boxes side by side and see if we can lure them into the boxes so that we can quietly close the door without having to chase them. Otherwise, it's reverting back to the usual, get them inside the house and try and chase them into the box, which is far more stressful. Unfortunately, the two boys aren't interested in the box or the treats inside and head back to their indoor bedrooms. The team resort to plan B, with Sheldon's headkeeper Carly trying to usher the pair from the inside into the crate outside. At the side of the box as they've just gone back into their indoor nest box, not even looking, not even thinking about it. With both plan A and plan B out of the window, it's going to need a more hands-on approach. Tutu isn't too much of a problem. Hang on. Let me just get... Yeah. Get slack. But Desmond is that much older... Desmond... ..is going to be a different kettle of fish, yes. ..and a lot wiser. For a while, he gives Carly the runaround. Mm -hmm. 
But finally, she manages to grab him. Good boy. With the pair now safely in their travel boxes... Really good. Thank you for coming to get there the boys. Alison is keen to head off back to Monkey World so the park's two new arrivals can spend the afternoon settling into their new home. Monkey World's top priority is to offer all of its primates a suitable, forever home. And the teams try to support each individual and cater for their specific needs. Companionship is a key part of this. All the park's residents need friendship of some kind, whatever their circumstances. Sometimes this means putting different species together, or creating same-sex partnerships. One pair of boys, whose friendship has had its ups and downs since they were put together, are cotton-top tamarinds, Hawkeye and Uncas. Cotton-top tamarinds are really beautiful animals. Um, they've got this beautiful crest of white hair on their head. They look stunning. Their coats are beautiful. They're always really fluffy and really shiny. So even though they're old, they're in a great condition. These two, they're not the most active of of, of primates that we have here at the park. Like I said, they are old, so they do quite a lot of sunbathing. They really do like the sunshine. They're pretty much always together, um, so if they're not eating or foraging, they'll be sat next to each other, either outside on a branch or on the nest box or in the nest box or in baskets that we provide inside. So they're a really close pair, and they do spend a lot of time in physical contact with each other. Uncas arrived via the British pet trade in 2009, along with a female, Alice. The two were very close, and when Alice passed away, he was paired with a new companion, Hawkeye, who'd been living on his own at a wildlife park in Leeds. The two have been companions ever since. Today, Karen is giving the ageing pair a form of enrichment to keep them active and stimulate their minds. The reason for presenting food in different ways is basically both mentally and physically. So we want them to come out in the morning or go to the next room and see something that they don't see every day. If it's, if it's sat there in a bowl, it's going to be quite boring. They know exactly where it is, they'll go and they'll eat it. If we provide them something that they don't see every day, it's mentally interesting because it's, it's something unusual for them. But also the way we present it, if it's in um, a bottle that's hanging from a piece of rope, then they have to use their, their muscles more to, to get down and grab hold of that food rather than, like I say, sitting in a basket and eating from a bowl of food. So mentally and physically, environmental enrichment will always help. Cotton-top tamarinds hail from the tropical forest of northwestern Colombia. Their diet consists of mainly insects and tree sap. Tragically, due to large-scale habitat loss and their previous use in pharmaceutical experiments in the 60s and 70s, their population has been decimated. They're now one of the most rare primates in the world and are critically endangered, with less than 1,000 remaining in the wild. While no one can predict the long-term future of the species, at least for Uncas and Hawkeye, life is relaxed and happy, mainly because of their companionship and the dedicated care they receive from the team. At the Marmoset Complex, staff are putting the finishing touches to a temporary bedroom for the imminent arrival of white-faced Saki monkeys Desmond and Tutu, two new friends for elderly resident Chloe. Well, the whole team is just really excited for Chloe to have companionship of her own kind, but also, hopefully, a companion that interacts with her slightly more than Jethro did. Uh, Tutu's still got a juvenile colour, so he's very beautiful. Um, and, and Desmond is pretty handsome, so yeah, I think they're going to be a wonderful addition to our section. Over the next few days, Desmond and Tutu will be assessed by Karen and the team to make sure they settle in and that there are no serious issues with Tutu's mobility. Hi, you. Hi, Mr. Frank. I know, it's a new box. Only then will they decide when to introduce Chloe to her new companions. I think we should let Desmond out first. Okay. I think that's him. Before releasing the pair, Karen takes the opportunity to weigh them in their boxes. Desmond is going to be released into the bedroom first. Come on, Mr. D. 
Good boy. Come on, Desmond. Excellent job. Excellent. You go on through. Yeah. Perfect. And he doesn't need any time to think about it. He's straight in and up onto the new branches and perches just installed by the team. With his dad ahead of him, Karen hopes son Tutu will be just as quick to follow him in. But he's nervous and staying put in the box. Come on, Tutu. He is not moving. <laughs> Karen decides to leave the box open and let Tutu come out in his own time. Mr. D. And once he plucks up the courage, he heads straight for Dad. Karen is pleased with how things are going, but is surprised at how unsteady Tutu is when moving around. Yes, we obviously know that Tutu has some mobility issues. A little bit worse than I was probably expecting, but um, I think it just needs some time to get used to the new environment and, and where everything is. And obviously, the more we watch him and we, we can see any problem areas and we can adapt the enclosure more. Yeah, it's just watching how they get on. But um, yeah, those gorgeous. You know, I really couldn't be happier. Desmond is flying about, leaping from branch to branch, exploring everything, announcing when he's found more nuts. That's going really well. And Tutu took a few seconds to come out of the box, but he has, and as soon as he got up into the branches, he's a bit wobbly, but actually doing really good and moving about all of the different food spots that Karen's put out for him. So I'm actually um, surprised how well Tutu, but both of them are doing, so that's great. Next step for the pair will be to investigate their new outdoor enclosure and then meet female Saki, Chloe. Next time on Monkey Life. Vet Thazar faces a tough challenge when Marmoset Freya suffers a possible life-changing injury. I'm gonna try to fix it before amputating. Um, it might work, it might not. And breakfast in the treetops for golden-cheeked gibbons Kim and Tien. Hello. 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 H